Here are five things to know about former Vice President Mike Pence, who's running for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. Pence played a pivotal role on January 6th when a pro-Trump mob attacked the Capitol as lawmakers met to certify the election for Joe Biden. Pence moved ahead with the vote despite pressure from Trump and his supporters to stop it. Anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. And anyone who asks someone else to put them over the Constitution should never be president of the United States again. The defining issue for him is going to be January 6th and, uh, uh, you know, America as a democratic republic. I mean, it's a, it's a bedrock issue here. He is unique among the Republican field because he could lose and he would still be in the center of this race because of the indictment, because of his historic role on January 6th. Um, it, it's... I get the sense, and when I talk with uh, Indiana Republicans in particular, he's, he's doing this for history. Pence's Christian faith is central to his politics and helped court evangelical voters when he campaigned with Trump. But that support may be waning. It's his, his, his routine talking point that he is, quote, a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican, pause for effect, in that order. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And that's who he's more or less always run as. I mean, you know, he's running as somebody who is pro-life, anti-abortion. Mike Pence has really made playing to evangelicals. And Mike Pence has been playing to them for a long time. When he was running his pre-campaign for president, starting from about April of 2021, he was doing his speaking tours, ostensibly going out and campaigning for other Republicans. He did a lot of stops at churches. He spoke at uh, kind of mainstays of the old Christian right, delivered a speech at Liberty University, spoke at Hillsdale College up in Michigan. Um, so he has been working very hard to try and hold some of that evangelical base, but it doesn't seem to be working. His biggest competitor in this really is, is Tim Scott. You know, Tim Scott is getting a lot of that evangelical support, especially in the Midwest evangelical support, very distinct from the kind of the Southern Baptist, fiery televangelist world that is really ensconced with Trump. Pence helped Trump get donors while in office, but now he's facing a funding shortfall in his own campaign for the presidency. Mike Pence was really put on the ticket by, by Paul Manafort and Reince Priebus. And the reason they were pushing Trump to do that was because they were worried about the down ballot implications. They needed somebody to vouch to, you know, quote unquote, regular mainstream conservatives, Midwestern evangelicals to have them show up. Indiana Governor Mike Pence was my first choice. I've admired the work he's done, especially in the state of Indiana. It's kind of ironic. When he was selected for the ticket, one of the ways that Manafort and Priebus sold him to Trump was that, you know, he's good at fundraising. Mike Pence has not gotten those mega donors. And, you know, he's running a skeleton campaign with a skeleton staff right now. But that will only last so long. And a lot of that has to do not, not with his stances, but just because he is trapped in the past. He and Donald Trump were trapped in 2020. And what you hear from a lot of Republican operatives that are not working on the Trump campaign is that the party and the party's voters want to move on from this. Pence signed multiple anti-abortion laws as Indiana governor. He also supports a federal ban on abortions after six weeks, when many people still don't know they're pregnant. I'm pro-life. I don't apologize for it. Pence has also said that abortions should be banned for pregnancies that are not viable. He's called on his fellow GOP candidates to back a federal 15-week ban as proposed in Congress. The cause of life is the calling of our time, and we must not rest and must not relent until we restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law in every state in this country. Pence's stance after January 6th has pitted Trump against his former vice president. It's not just the, the judges and the, and the prosecutors that Donald Trump is attacking. He's also attacking Mike Pence. That keeps him in the national narrative. You know, he gave him an insult for the first time. You know, you know, signature Donald Trump insult, little Mike Pence with two Ds. 
when he returned in the months later to the rhetoric he was using before January 6, arguing that I had the right to overturn the election. I just decided it'd be best that we went our separate ways, and we have. He's been digging Trump recently as, quote, my former running mate, obviously very diminutive to the former president. Even in the White House throughout the campaign, Pence was always kind of kept off in a silo. He would have meetings alone with Donald Trump. And this is, um, to me at least, is one of the most fascinating things here, how much Pence will or will not say of their private one-on-one -on -one meetings that they had while they were in the White House, particularly after the 2020 election loss. Pence faces several other Republicans in the primary lead up to 2024, which the PBS NewsHour will profile. You can find that on pbs.org newshour or right here on our YouTube channel. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nicole Ellis.